today sees the start of seven consecutive home games for the Steelers in the newly renamed Fireplay Elite League. Matt Greenfield returns in goal after being rested for the Cup dead rubber yesterday. He got a shutout against these Flyers three weeks ago. Sebastian Pichet and Martin Lattel return to the squad. It's Brendan Connolly who misses out. Puts the brakes on, goes back to the point. Never line and near side. Goes down low. Out into the slot. Christo settles it down and shoots onto the crossbar from his knees. Took up a great position in the slot. Maneuvered it onto his forehand as he was losing balance. And he flicks one against the iron. He was tied up first of all. Then he gets a little pocket of space. And it's crossbar and out. Opportunity for a two-on-one here for the Steelers. It's Raska. He plays it across. Back to Raska and he couldn't quite tap it in. Here's the breakaway then with Raska. Little give and go with McNally. Unselfish return. And look at the stick from Buffaro. Didn't make contact with the puck, but did make contact with the stick of Raska. Housing it. Does well to keep Raska away from the puck. It's the pass forward down towards Kivilati. Steelers have turned this one over in a dangerous area. Oh, and it's grabbed out of the air by Greenfield. To deny Kivilati, who was waiting on the doorstep. Steelers guilty of a turnover in their own zone. It was Pichet. It's not like him. And then there was no one in front to cover Kivilati, but the stick of Greenfield. Prevented it reaching the stick of Kivilati. Flyers hoping a little bit more like the Dundee Stars game that the Steelers played here and played a scoreless first and then fell behind in the second. Ultimately lost that game 2-1. One of three home defeats the Steelers have suffered in league play here. And now trying to burst through the middle and they'll break the deadlock. It's the speed of Newman that's made it happen. Carved through the middle of the Fife defence. And the low finish under Owen. Finally gives the crowd something to shout about. It's not been a classic Steelers performance so far. Maybe that's the spark. And from Schultz is knocked down and now he's got defensive work to do. McNally there as well. There's a little two-on-one developing in front. And Greenfield makes the save as the Flyers took the shooting option rather than the pass. Once again, the Steelers' netminder. The last line of defence, making the crucial intervention. It's Reese Harsh, who found himself in front. Was the pass to Phillips the better option? And he thought he could beat Greenfield glove side. Many have tried this season. Harsh, the latest to find out how difficult it can be. Never really in full control of that under attentions from Barry McKenzie. Ciampini. Schultz. Ciampini again. Into traffic and saved by Owen. Neverlinen. Fake the pass. Skates it in himself. Nicholas Neverlinen shoots wide. Still waiting on his first Steelers goal. Had visions of providing it there. Petgrave. Housing it. Flyers just need to get themselves a little bit of breathing room. Lawrence skated straight into the hit from Mitchell. Phillips. Mitchell takes a position top of the crease. Shot from the angle is saved. Follow up attempt. Might work out for Sheffield, but they are pressing. They've got the Flyers penned in here. Neverlinen. Petgrave! The Steelers have the breathing room that they needed. And it's provided by Petgrave. Neverlinen provided the pass. And Petgrave, the quick release to beat Owen on the blocker side. The 
Steelers have been pressing. The Flyers just haven't been able to get out. And the Steelers will feel that they deserve that goal. 45-22. And Petgrave has now reached five for the season. The Flyers have possession. They're in the offensive zone. They only have six minutes left. Greenfield with the blocker save. Lawrence. Touch game off Christo. Chance here. Oh, and look at the aggressive net minding of Matt Greenfield. Way beyond his crease. He knew that only he could save the day. Into the inadvertent deflection off Christo's stick. It was Housinger who moved in. He knew there were no passing options available. And Greenfield came to meet him. Kivilati. Housinger. Phillips trying to lift the puck free. Larkinen. Oh, that bobble takes the puck out of the zone. He's got to be careful. And he does just about get it to Johansson because Latal fancied himself an empty netter. He's hit the post twice in this game, Martin Latal. Feels like he's due a little bit of good luck. Steelers get this one away. And they'll get a touch onto this one. And Latal's touch will take it in. That'll wrap things up nicely for the Steelers. And Martin Latol with the touch at centre ice. He could have reached it just to make sure, but he didn't need to. He knew it was going in. And it's the Steelers' third goal into the empty net. Phillips. That one deflects, and it will go behind the goal. And the Steelers will play it into the corner. And that is that. The Steelers are winners by three goals to nil. Another shutout for Matt Greenfield. Five on the season. And two of them have come here against the Five Flyers. Newman, Petgrave and Latal the scorers. A shutout for Matt Greenfield, his fifth of the season already, and his second against the Five Flyers. He will get to do the Eddie for the first time. And it looks like he's got something planned, which is more than you can say for some others who've won Man of the Match recently. joins Martin McKay as the only Steelers goalies to record a pair of shutouts against the five flyers. A lot harder for a net miner, he's got to go in the pads, but he's going the full way round. Credit to him. Lots of other players have taken a shortcut in recent weeks. He's doing the full lap all around the net. And he's got Allen and Jones and Dowd out for a little bit of support with him. And we got a little bit of rugby. And it's try time for Matt Greenfield. Four points on the try, two points in the Elite League table. Just check the grounding. TRY. Aaron, a valuable two points. Did we make hard work of that? Yeah, maybe a little bit. Um, I thought we had our chances in that hockey game. I thought, uh, you know, that 79-62-75 line had multiple chances in the first 40 minutes to score three or four. And, you know, credit to them. They played very well defensively tonight and frustrated our game a little bit. And I think that's that's a worry. You know, when it's one nothing hockey game, things aren't really going your way. You start to try and do too much at times, and that's when, you know, they'll, they'll counter and, and tie a hockey game up. But... That second goal was big. Greener was outstanding tonight. He didn't really look like anything was going to beat him from the puck drop tonight, which was a, a good thing from our end. And, you know, like you said, those two points are all that matter right now. How nice is it to be on the bench knowing that you've got that kind of goal tending and that stability at the back end? Yeah, he's been awesome. You know what I mean? There's been, there hasn't been a night since he's been in there that we've, we haven't gotten a good one out of him. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a benefit for our group for sure. A couple of players missing last night, a couple of players different so circumstances tonight. Can you explain that? 
Oh, well, we have the extra import, um, you know, and Cons was just dealing with a little bit of niggle that he took last night. And instead of him trying to play at 75, 80%, you know, you play the healthy bodies that you have. And, um, you know, we, we got our two points out of it. Yeah, busy time ahead now. The games come thick and fast, don't they? Yeah, midweek again this week. Um, very important hockey game. Coventry's playing good hockey. They always play us well as, you know, two. So we'll have to be ready and, and dialed. Yeah, just talk us through the Challenge Cup, if you can, a second. Obviously, Nottingham going through tonight after beating yep. uh, Manchester. Where do you see the group and where do you think our next opponents will come from? I think it's all going to depend on that Guildford-Coventry series and how that looks. I'm, I'm not even sure or, you know exactly what the tiebreakers look like currently, so we'll, we'll just take whoever we get. Okay. Todd, a shutout defeat for your team tonight, but it was close game all the way through. Yeah, you know, I, th I think the entire weekend we we, we challenged the guy to be better in, in a lot of areas. I, I think they were, although we didn't get the results. Um, you, you know, coming into this building is always a difficult task. We found that out last time we were here. Um, if we would have capitalized on one of our two of our chances earlier, it uh, might have been a different hockey game. But uh, we just didn't have enough to get over the line. There was a power play early in the third on the fresh ice. Do you feel your team did enough on special teams tonight? Certainly our kill has been trending in the right direction and up until this weekend um, so is our power play. Um, but our power play we didn't convert on the weekend but once again we're playing against two teams that have the two top kills in the league so they don't, they don't give up very many. Um, you know a little static but you know we're going to have to put our work boots on this week and get it right. Is that going to be mainly on the offensive side of things just the one goal scored this weekend? Yeah, I mean, I think that obviously offense um, has been an issue for us at times. At times it hasn't. So it's just that, you know, that real consistency, right? Um, you know, for us, it's just focusing on commitment to both sides of the puck. I think that, you know, defensively, it wasn't bad this week. Um, we still have much better and we still have a long ways to go. But, we're, you know, we're making positive strides. And, um, you know, we have, a, we have a fantastic group of guys. I think if we find... A, a, a good addition or two to this lineup um, will be in a good spot. You've already made a couple already this season, so you are still looking for, for new bodies. Yeah, absolutely. A, to cover for injuries, and B, you know, sometimes, um, you, you know, the, if you're not producing offense, you've got to bring in maybe a, that guy that'll give you that spark. Um, we've done it before in the past, and it's proved very well for us. Um, you, you know, as I said to you earlier, we, we have a group of guys that are committed and playing the right way, and uh, I want to provide them with the tools that, that's going to help them be successful.